Hey, welcome back to Strength Hacks Coaching. This is Alex. I'm going to be going over the upper body day that was in the week two of my peaking phase. So I finally have a date set for my upcoming mock meet. You know, I'll be testing my one rep max of the squat, bench, and deadlift in my garage. And then it was going to be taking place on Friday, uh, October 22nd. So it looks like from the date that I am recording this, I have about one, two, three, four, four weeks left. So anyways, going on to today's training session, I wanted to find a way to do some maximal singles with on the Larson press. So I went up to 275 and it didn't move as well as I was hoping for. So I dropped down to 262 and a half pounds and I was actually feeling pretty strong at that point and I ended up hitting a double PR. Then afterwards I dropped down to 195 pounds for sets of 10 on the pause bench. And my strength was zapped after that Larson press PR, which is why I was using such a low weight on the rep work. You know, usually I'm stronger than 195 for 10. I mean, you know, I've hit 205 for over 10 reps on the floor press before, I'm pretty sure. So, you know, but when you hit a big, um, you know, max double, you know, I never really hit max doubles. So that just zapped all my strength. So after the pause bench, I moved on to assisted pull-ups with uh, just one mini band. And I hit another uh, PR with one rep, so I got 14 reps this time around, which is pretty good considering I was only doing this for 10 to 11 reps, you know, just a few weeks ago. And then the next exercise I do, as you see, is the deficit push-up. Next week, I'm going to put plates underneath my hands to increase the range of motion. It's going to allow me to get more out of less weight, too. So, you know, I'm planning um, dropping the weight down to about 30, 35 pounds, putting a uh, probably an inch and a half thick plates underneath my hands and that way I can put my chest through a fuller range of motion. And if you're not doing this movement, I highly suggest that you start doing it ASAP. It's great for shoulder health, you know. If you're just doing all uh, bench pressing per se, you're really neglecting your serratus anterior muscles and your muscles responsible for, you know, protracting your shoulder because a lot of time when people bench they keep their shoulders retracted the whole time. But, you know, there are a lot of muscles responsible for protracting the shoulder and bringing it forward. And if you neglect those, you're going to have some serious weak links in your chain. So then after those, I moved on to the band chest fly. And I'm using one black band and one purple band. Technically, the black band says it's 100 and the purple says it's 20. But it definitely doesn't feel anywhere near those weights. So I don't really count the weight with these style of bands. They're not regulated enough compared to the elite FTS bands, you know, those are calibrated and you can check charts and see how much tension the band provides based on the length that it's stretched out. But um, <clears throat> I did inverted rows afterwards and I'm finally getting used to the grip width on the inverted row. And I feel like this is finally gonna take off as far as my loading potential on it goes. So, you know, expect a lot of PRs on this soon. Just because I'm finally getting used to using the straight bar again and uh, a wider grip as last time I was doing this I was using a much closer grip which makes it a lot easier to use heavier loads but you know now that my upper back and rhomboids are getting stronger from the wider grip I feel like there's uh, some good things in store on the inverted row that's for sure. So then later on I came back out to the garage for a nighttime giant set session you know just real quick I have four movements i do them all in a row so you know it's kind of like a superset but instead of two movements it's four and then i'll rest you know between three to five minutes in between and i did hit prs on all the lifts shown here and i did do some bird dogs as well after the shoulder raises but i don't film them or push progression on them really you know it's a uh, a movement quality exercise it's all about how you execute it so there's no point in just adding reps on reps on reps if the way you're performing the bird dog isn't proper. Then on the safety squat bar JM press with the reverse bands I did hit a pretty big PR. I got 156 pounds for 15 reps and from here on out I'm going to have to slow down the progression to preserve my rep quality. This is a movement where if you add too much load too fast your form is going to break down and you can possibly end up hurting your elbows too. So. And then last but not least, I finished this workout off with some lateral raises, um, seated, and using this big buddy heater. They were pretty tough, just because 
the way the heater swings, it adds a unstable element to the movement and it makes your shoulders have to fire that much harder just to control the load. And as a thank you for sticking around till the end of the video, I just want to put in a real quick tidbit about preventing elbow tendonitis. So basically you just want to rotate variations, uh, grips, hand positions, or your uh, modalities, you know, as such as using a machine or a barbell or a dumbbell. Uh, this especially applies to your pressing and your curling or um, also tricep extension movements. And you want to make sure to leave these movements in for a minimum of three weeks. Only take them out once they stall or the first signs, when the first signs of overuse appear. And then last but not least, make sure to push progression on these movements every session, whatever way you can. You know, whether it's adding reps, adding load, even adding sets. All these little small progressions are going to add up and make your muscles bigger because that's what determines our output, our size, basically. You know, some people defer based on their neural pathways. Some people can exert more force through their fibers than others. But take the same person with the same genetics. If they add 10 pounds of muscle, they're going to be able to produce more work, you know, more uh, volume every single time. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button. Also, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell too. That way you never miss a video when I post it. Have a great day.